Welcome to the Construction Record Podcast. I'm digital media editor Warren Fry, and today I have with me... Hello, I'm Jack Statham. I'm the Lean and Sustainability Specialist here with Shandos Construction. Uh, and I guess we should start with what is Lean? I mean, I'm sure many people in the audience know, but not everybody does. So let's uh, let's go with that to start with. Okay, yeah. So Lean to me is basically this idea of continuous improvement. And I really focused on the kind of cultural aspects of lean and really that idea of respect for people. And by empowering people, you allow them to really make improvements consistently and daily. And that overall improves the organization um, based on whatever you want to improve at that time. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's it's been around a little while, I, I believe, uh, from the previous uh, seminars I've attended and such, that it's based on um, not originally, but uh, the auto industry was the first to adopt here based on what the auto industry in Japan was doing. I could be getting that wrong, though. Yeah, it's definitely it originated from the Toyota production system mm -hmm. and Toyota really implemented it back in the 40s to kind of recover from that post-war era where they were a smaller manufacturer trying to compete with some of the larger American manufacturers. However, they didn't have the inventory or the cash flow to really um, to really do that mass production model. So what they did is they started implementing the Toyota production system to, mm -hmm. I'd say, um, be able to compete, give the um, customers what they wanted, kind of when they wanted it, and with the quality that was expected from them. So it was then brought over basically, um, I'd say the 80s to 90s, mm -hmm. and implemented kind of within manufacturing and then construction to start improving basically quality and production of uh, construction sites. And in a construction contest, what's the same and what's different compared to, say, building a vehicle? I mean, I'm sure there are similarities, but there's got to be differences as well. I'd say one of the biggest uh, similarities towards, um, like, the Toyota production system and manufacturing is the idea that you want to give the customers what they want with the quality that they're expecting. And I'd say this is even more so important within construction because we are doing a very complex buildings, mm -hmm. uh, very complex structures that um, to be able to pivot and understand exactly what's required uh, when it's required and the quantity and quality that's required, it really gives construction that kind of advantage to implement. I'd say one of the biggest differences between um, basically manufacturing and construction is the variability that is kind of inherent within construction. So mm -hmm. no two projects are the same. So it's really hard to implement the same idea kind of across the board for that um, continuous improvement standardization that you would typically get within a manufacturing setting. And, and so in the case of Chando, so when did it come about that it adopted these principles? And actually, besides that, uh, I would assume it's top to bottom, like this applies to both management and to a guy on the tools. Yes, I, I say that's one of the best um, best ways that we implemented lean within Shandos is really focusing on the cultural aspect and going right from man management to the guys on the tool. So basically everybody has access to the same training. Uh, we basically make as much improvements visible, whether it's coming from the president or CEO, right down to our carpenters on site. So it's really great to really be able to share wins, lessons learned, and experiences from everybody within the organization. I'd say and when we implemented or started to implement Lean was back in 2015, and this was kind of um, coinciding with our first IPD project, the Mosaic Center up mm -hmm. in Edmonton. And maybe you could go into that, what uh, what was used in the Mosaic Center and maybe other projects as well that uh, where Lean's been implemented. So our main standardization of Lean and what which was first implemented within the Mosaic Center was our, our ideas of the last planner system. And this is basically the idea of pole planning where you get the people on site 
um, closest to the actual work to help create the um, on-site schedule. This allows them to discuss different um, scheduling aspects and also really allow flow within the project. How did COVID affect all this? Because I remember we a little while back did a series of, uh, you did a series of videos and we did an interview with uh, someone from Chandos who traveled throughout the country in an RV to visit sites. And I would assume that Lean kind of worked to the advantage of Chandos during COVID because you had to streamline just because of the situation we were all in. Yeah, I, I would say our lean culture definitely um, definitely allowed us to really quickly pivot due to mm -hmm. COVID. And this is one of the things kind of that I like the most about our implementation of two second lean and weekly stand up meetings that are company wide. And this is really because our project site or our project teams were creating different improvements um, to, for how they were dealing with COVID and then sharing it company wide. So we were getting this kind of ricochet effect from all of our projects. So one superintendent would make an improvement, then another superintendent or another project team would see that improvement and then improve upon it. And then within a matter of a couple days or week, we were able to really quickly change our safety implementation of uh, COVID measures. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd say one of the best examples of this was how we do site um, sign-ins and uh, sign-outs. Originally or typically pre-COVID, it was all done kind of paper and pen and you would sign in, sign out um, when you got to site or left site. Um, then we had a superintendent that implemented different cups, so for used pens and new pens. And then we had one that would give those papers to their site suit or to their uh, site foreman and um, trade partners. So they would take um, the sign-ins back to their team, get them filled out and then return us. And then within like four days, our site team uh, was given that, given an idea of using QR codes for signing people in and signing out. So everything was now done on the personal phone from mm -hmm. the guys coming to site. So we really saw that like within a week transformation between paper and pen to QR codes. And then other teams started seeing these the implementation of these codes. And then we were able to allow it. Now we're using them for VDC, QA, QC stuff. We're using them for near misses and incident reports. So we've really been able to take a, an idea and through multiple small improvements, turn that into a new company standard. Okay, and you mentioned the two second lean challenge, but you could explain more fully what that is. Yeah, so two second lean is based on this concept um, by a book um, also called two second lean by Paul Akers. And what this is, is basically the idea of allowing your, um, as having your team members kind of implement small daily improvements. Now, these improvements can be very small, so it qualifies as long as it saves you at least two seconds of time. So basically any type of improvement counts as a two second lean improvement. Then what you do is you take a video of it and then share it kind of with the rest of the organization. That allows other people to see your improvement and then learn from, from you. And I'd say the, I added a fourth kind of rule to it, and this is kind of what allows us to do our two second lean challenge, is that you really wanna focus on celebrating these improvements. And I'd say this is the most important part of two second lean that if people make videos, but you don't celebrate it, then you really quickly lose that steam. However, when you share the videos as much as you can, you celebrate the wins and you really work at implementing them across teams and projects, you really start seeing this magic happen. So what our two second lean challenge is every, every year for the month of March and April, we do a 60 day two second lean challenge. And it basically inspires all of our teams to make as many improvements many videos as they can within the um, the two months and then share them company wide. And then what we do is we highlight all of the videos that were created basically at 
on Friday of every week throughout this two months. Mm -hmm. So I'd say on average, we get about 50 to 60 different ideas and videos shared with us within this two month duration. This is an annual event, but a lean is a continuous process. I would assume besides this pretty important event, you also have ways throughout the year for people to sort of, and it seems to me also lean is not terribly hierarchical. If it's a good idea, it doesn't really matter where it came from. Yes. And, and I'd say that's um, extremely uh, important to note that a lot of our best ideas have come right from the carpenters on site. Mm -hmm. So I'd say, I think our QR code came from a general foreman up in Edmonton was the first one to start implementing it. And mm -hmm. then our safety managers got a, um, saw that idea and then implemented it um, within their sign and sign outs. So it's definitely like wherever the idea comes from is kind of not the important part, but the idea itself. And going kind of to that whole year round improvement is we do constantly, um, kind of work towards that two second lean idea kind of year round. So within the two months, we would get about the 50 or 60 videos. However, we don't want to limit them only to that two months. So it is always reinforced at, um, at our stand up meetings every Friday of keep making improvements and sharing those improvements. So I'd say we'd get another about 50 or 60 videos throughout the rest of the year. So it does definitely slow down when you don't have that um, daily uh, push towards it. However, it it always stays fairly active. And one thing to note with these type of improvements, 100 videos is only the tip of the iceberg of the actual improvements that are made. So mm -hmm. some people are camera shy or don't really know that they're improvements and improvements. So it's really, I'd like to see this number a lot higher, but it's a lot like the near misses that you might get 50 near miss reports. However, you know that there was a lot more than that. Okay. And these are not restricted to your internet. These are anybody can see these if they want to and learn more about lean itself by watching your videos, right? Yes, we do have both a YouTube channel and also a Vimeo channel where we do post all of our videos along with descriptions of why we think they were great improvements. And if anybody else is interested in what Chandos is up to, what would be the best place to start besides those sites? I'd say the best place to start is reading the book Two Second Lean. Um, it, it's a fairly easy read, but uh, one thing I liked the most about it was Paul Akers was really able to simplify lean into this idea that a lot of people can really get behind and support kind of fast and easy without a lot of training. So when I started down kind of the continuous improvement path myself, I was more focused towards like the Lean Six Sigma uh, methodology mm -hmm. kind of focused aspect of it. And it really confused me when you're starting to talk about like the respect for people culture aspect of Lean. However, that book kind of like simplified it and really showed that the culture aspect is what really makes these massive improvements kind of continual and um, shareable. Okay, thanks very much for joining us today. Yeah, you're welcome.